Okay, so we're going to start on exercise 203 today. Um, the projector has to warm up, so we have to see it. Um, it's very common for me to hand you these exercises early, but it doesn't mean that you have to start doing them. It's not a quiz. I'm not going to just drop a piece of paper on you and say, go for it. Um, I will always go through it. So it's just my way of getting it out to you so you can read through it and, and get ready for it. Um, but then I will, I, of course, go through it and, and try to show you everything and, and talk our way through it. Uh, today, we're going to continue with the same drawing that we used last class, the one with the floor plan in it. And we're going to draw an elevation, and I'm going to start to show you some of the 3D commands that work with it. Uh, we're not going to have a whole building today. We're going to have a little bit of a building. And I'm going to show you a few things that you know we have to kind of build up in stages. Um, and then we'll continue working next class on, on Wednesday. We're going to do some renderings for the first time. We're really going to start to talk about V-Ray and, and whatever. I know you don't have that much yet, but we're going to do basic shapes and some rendering with them. And uh, I used to, when I first started teaching the class, I would do, um, basically we'd do a bunch of Rhino in the beginning, and then we'd do V-Ray at the end. And people seemed to get a lot more out of it if we mixed V-Ray while we were going along. Um, and certainly people that were in 220 or in one of the design studios that wanted to be able to use the software, it was helpful to have a little bit of materials along the way. So we are by no means getting into advanced materials yet. <laughs> we're just starting with the basics, but we'll, we'll kind of flop back and forth. So next class, we'll do some rendering, then we'll be back in Rhino again. So it's just kind of as we move forward, we're going to flip, flip around a little bit. Um, so I went ahead and I opened the floor plan from last class. Uh, opened it right off my flash drive, you should be able to do the same. Uh, if your floor plan looks different or you adapted it, by all means, that's fantastic. Mine actually isn't completely done, but it's enough for what I'm going to be showing you uh, for what we're doing today. So the first thing um, that's important to kind of start to understand is that Rhino, much like AutoCAD, much like the Adobe Suite, for example, contains something called layers that help us clarify and organize the, the lines and objects that are in our drawings. And so uh, in the default Rhino view, uh, we have kind of a sidebar. And usually, properties is on top that gives us general properties about a given object. Next to it is a, a pie-shaped thing that looks like layers. Uh, if it's not showing, there's a button for layers up here on the toolbar that you can click. Usually, it's showing by default. And we can look here, and we can see that there are a number of layers that have already been um, created for us as a default. You've discovered this in AutoCAD, probably, where there's a bunch of layers by default. These are the default Rhino layers. Um, right now, we have something called default. And then we have layer 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, and 5. If we look at the layers palette here, we have a name. We have a check mark. And the check mark is next to only one of the layers. And that means that's the active layer. So if I were to draw something, it would automatically go on to that particular layer. Okay? If uh, it's checked, that's the default, or that's the active layer. Next to it, we have the on and off. It's a light bulb. Right? It's kind of like freezing and thawing in AutoCAD. It's, it's a combination of freeze, thaw, and on, off in AutoCAD. Um, so it's very easy to turn layers on and off. We have a little lock icon, right, a little padlock. When that changes to be blue in color, it means that we can't select or edit the, that particular layer. We can, however, still snap to that layer. So if we were to turn a layer off, the layer disappears. We no longer snap to it. If the layer is locked, we can't select it or change anything with it, but we can still snap to it. So there's a little bit of a distinction there. Okay. Next to that is a default color for that layer. So anything drawn on layer 1 would be red. Anything drawn on layer 2 would be purple, okay, uh, et cetera. Next to that, we have something called material. By, by default, everything has just a basic white material on it. So if we were to render this, we just get white. Okay? We will ultimately be assigning a lot of V-Ray materials through the layers because it's, it's convenient to organize your, your buildings and your objects as um, like materials. So all of the walls have a certain material. All the walls go on a layer. It just naturally falls together very nicely. Um, so we'll ultimately be using that a lot. As we continue over here, we've got a few other options. One would be line types. We're never going to touch this because really this class is about rendering, not, not production drawings. Uh, likewise, print width uh, is for when we're printing the lines, what the width is going to be. Again, pretty much irrelevant for this class. But it's there uh, if you would be interested in it. So fewer options in the layers than, say, AutoCAD, but at the same time, decent similarities such that you can use it. 
So uh, what I've drawn thus far, and probably what you've drawn thus far, is on the default layer. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and rename the default layer by double clicking on it, or, or clicking once and then clicking again, and highlighting the text. And then I'll, I'll call this floor plan, for lack of a better term. You, of course, can call it whatever you want. Uh, I'm not going to be strict about what your layer names are. Whatever works for you works for me. Okay. So then I want to um, create another object. I want to draw basically the, the front elevation or the south elevation of this building, which is this elevation. And I want to draw that on a different layer. And so in order to do that, I want to change my default layer. Right? So I'll check the box next to layer 1. Uh, or you can actually double click on layer 1, and it will, uh, it will move the checkbox as well. And now anything that I draw is going to show up in red because it's on layer 1, which is now red. Okay? If I were to accidentally have started drawing right, in, the layer, in the floor plan layer, I can still select my object. I can come over here to the layer that I want it to go to, say layer 1 here. I can right click and say change object layer. And we'll see that the color changes to red, and the object is now on that layer. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and delete these for just a second, because those were just examples. I'll make layer 1 current or active. And I'm going to rename this to be front elevation. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something else that's kind of beyond the scope of what you need right now, but ultimately it will be very important. One of the things that layers um, offers you in Rhino is something called nested layers. So I can have a layer. Right, let me go ahead and just create a new layer here. And we'll call this drawings. Or I could call it 2D or something like that. Then I can take my floor plan and my front elevation, and I can drag those on top of that drawing 2D layer. And we'll get a little plus sign. And these will be sub-layers of drawings. So my front elevation and my floor plan are both sub-layers of the drawings 2D layer which means I can turn all of the drawings off at once if I want. So it's not really relevant right now because you don't have a really complicated drawing. But when you get to your final project in this class, you may have 200 layers. And all of those layers, if you have them organized well with sublayers, are really easy to work with. If you don't do any sublayers, it can get really complicated. So I like to show you that now, and then I'll reinforce it down the road. But it exists. Not necessary for what we're doing today, but it does, it does uh, exist. So I have front elevation as my active layer. And I'm going to go ahead and draw. Uh, and I'm going to draw a few lines as guides. So I'll just draw a line straight down here. I pick the polyline tool. And then I'm going to start doing this. One of the customizations that comes with Rhino is that if you want to repeat the last command, you just right click. So a lot of times, I will have started by picking the polyline. And then I'll draw a bunch of lines. And I just right click to keep going. Right at each point. So it's a left click and then a right click, and I can repeat. Same thing, left click, and then a right click, and I've drawn that. Okay? So all I'm trying to do is start to establish what this front elevation looks like. I'm pulling lines down from here so that I know where my corners are. Ultimately, I'll pull from the windows as well, um, and we'll get to that in just a second. So I have a ground that I've established. It's completely arbitrary. It doesn't really matter where it is. I'm going to use the trim command. So I type trim, or I go up to edit and then trim. Right, either way. Select cutting objects. I'll use this ground as the cutting object. I'll hit Enter, and then I'll drag through those objects. And that gives me a nice ground line. And now I need to start to establish what this elevation looks like. Okay? This does not by any means have to be particularly accurate. We're doing simple stuff. Okay, so let me go ahead and use offset, which is a command that we used before. I can type offset, or I can go to curve, offset, offset curve. And I'm going to specify a distance. And so I'm not going to worry about what the foundation would be and what the floor thickness would be. We're just going simple, right? So let's say it's 10 feet. So I'll type 10, followed by the little apostrophe for 10 feet. And I'll select. It says select curve to offset. I'll select this curve. And I'll offset it to there. Okay, so I'm making the top of my building, so to speak, or the top of my wall. Okay. So let me go ahead and do some more trimming. So I'll type trim or select trim. Right, it's right there. And we'll use these as cutting objects. 
So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And then I'm going to trim here, 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 and here. Okay. So if I'm looking at this in elevation, and this is a kind of a throwback to 130 when you used to have to draw these elevations, the same concept, right? I'm using right, the orientation of this to really easily draw up this um, plan, or this elevation, sorry. So let me go ahead and draw a few lines for the window. So we'll draw a line down here, we'll draw a line down there, draw a line from here. Draw a line from there. Now, you guys may have more windows. You draw for all of them. That's fine. Right? And so I have those established. Now, I need to know where the sill of the window is and where the head of the window is. So I'll use my offset command once again. So we'll go to offset, if I can type. And I'm going to offset this curve, but I need a different distance. It's not going to be 10 feet anymore. This time, right, it's, let's do for the head, it would be 6 foot 8. And again, if you do round numbers, that's fine with me. Right? So we'll do 6 foot 8. There's the head of the window. And let me do the floor of the window. Uh, I don't know. We'll do it at like 2 feet or something. Right? Uh, let's do 2 foot 6. Something like that. Okay? So I'm working up with these guides to really quickly start to build up what these windows are going to look like. Uh, let me go ahead and do trim again. So I can pick, I can type trim or I can pick the trim tool. And we'll select those, nose. And uh, incidentally, in Rhino, if you want to deselect something, so you see I accidentally selected this piece and I didn't want it selected. Um, if you hold down the control key instead of the shift key, it will deselect an object. So you can control which is being selected and which is being deselected. I'll go ahead and hit enter, and then we need to do some trimming. So we'll trim around these windows. So, and I'll go ahead and hit enter, and now I have some nice windows. Okay? These are still all separate objects, so let me go ahead and select this and type join. Or go up to edit and then join. All right, again, same, same basic thing. Now I can come in here and I can add some more detail uh, on one of these windows. So let's say, uh, let's, let me offset this time, and we'll do a distance of, I don't know, three and a half inches for some window trim. Do something like that. Looks, looks pretty good. Uh, maybe I'd add some, some character to the window, right? Maybe I'd add some mullions or something. Turn off center here. Something's wrong with my mouse. And again, I'm, I'm just making this up as we go along. Uh, and I could add more, I could add thickness to those windows. There's a variety of things that I could do. But for right now, that's, that's good enough. And since this window is the same as that window, I can just copy the interior and the trim. And I can go, uh, there's, remember there's two different copies. The one that I want is under transform copy, or if I just type copy. Uh, and we'll go from here to there. And I end up with a copy of what that window would look like. Now, I could spend a little bit more time going through and drawing and embellishing and that sort of thing, which I encourage you to do. Uh, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to move on from that and show you some of the 3D stuff that I want to be able to, to work through. So thus far, everything that we've done in this class has been limited to the top view. right? So we're going to switch out of the top view now and start to see this in three dimensions. So I'm going to double click on top. And I'm going to double click on perspective. So we can see this right in its kind of 3D. Remember to orbit or to spin around, I'm going to right click. right. If you wanted to pan, you'd hold down shift and then right click. And it would let you pan from side to side. Right? Um, and so what I have here, I want to make sure I'm doing it correctly. We're going to use a command that's called rotate 3D. So if we look right now, the elevation that I drew is perfectly flat. Right? And the floor plan is perfectly flat. Now, it's natural that the floor plan would be flat on the ground. But the elevation 
in reality should be lifted up. And so we're going to use a type of rotate that's called Rotate 3D. And Rotate 3D is different from Rotate, from regular Rotate, because we're rotating in three dimensions. Okay? So what I have with Rotate 3D is, let's, let's walk through this a little bit. If I have regular Rotate, right, I might have, let's say I have an object like this, right, and I pick a point to rotate from, and what's going to happen is the object is going to just rotate in the flat plane in one direction or the other. Okay? In Rotate 3D, I suddenly have a 3D object. This is a horrible 3D object. Something like this. And I have to be able to define how to rotate it. Right? Maybe I want it to rotate around in that direction. Maybe I want this to rotate up in that direction. There's a lot of different ways of rotating. So it's going to ask me some, for some more information. So if I go to Transform and then Rotate 3D, okay, the first thing it's going to say is select the objects to rotate. That's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm going to select all of these objects to rotate, and I'll go ahead and hit Enter. Then the next thing is it's going to say Start of Rotation Axis. Right? So this means around what line should I rotate. So let's say I wanted to rotate right, this 3D object so that it ultimately ended up on the tall side like this. Right? I wanted to rotate that to there. Make sense? Okay. So I need to pick an axis around which I'm going to rotate. So let's say I pick this as a line, as my axis of rotation. Right? Then I could basically lift this shape up to become that. Right? So this line here is the same. So let me do it here, and this might help. Okay, so the start of the rotation axis would be here. The end of the rotation axis would be here. The angle or first reference point, right? Now, Rhino does a good job of, sorry about that. Of previewing what we're going to see here. So if I go from there to there, it gives me a circle and a line. And so you can kind of see how I'm going to be able to rotate this. When I click for this angle or first reference point, it's going to let me flip it up into place. And we kind of get these guides that show it flipping. right? Um, if I didn't have ortho on, it, it would let me flip it at any angle. right? It's, it's just snapping. But you can kind of see how it's going at any angle there. Okay? If I turn ortho on, it's going to jump straight to vertical, which is what I want. Okay? So I'll go ahead and click. And now I have that in its vertical. And so as I orbit around, we see that we have the floor plan flat, the way it should be. And we have the elevation folded up in space as well. Okay, So that's, that's getting there. right? We have nice lines and, and what have you. So what I'll do from here is I'm going to go ahead and turn off this curve for a second. So remember, I had drawings 2D. Those were all my drawings. I don't want all of my drawings turned off. Right? I just want the front elevation. And it's not going to let me turn it off because it's currently the active layer. So let me go ahead and make this layer 2 active. And now I can turn off just the front elevation. Right? I can turn off both front elevation and floor plan by turning off all the drawings. Right? So I have flexibility there. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the front elevation. This layer 2 is now my active layer. It's purple. And I'm going to double click on layer 2 and I'm going to call this 3D walls for lack of something better. Right? And again, I'm trying very hard to start to organize. So instead of just using layer 2, I'm naming layer 2 so that I know what's on it. Right? Doesn't really matter right now because we're doing such a small drawing, but imagine a couple hundred layers and if you don't label it, you won't know what it is. And it's really confusing to figure out which, which object is which. So 3D walls is active. Right? And so now I'm going to do my first foray into the 3D world. So we're going to use an extrude curve command. But before I do that, I do want to make sure that my curves are closed okay? or joined. And so right now, I happen to know that they already are. There's one wall that I'm going to extrude. And there's another wall that I'm going to extrude. So there's two different ones. Okay? If they weren't joined, when I went to click on them, I'd get something like this, where I had a single line. If you get just a single line, 
you want to hold down shift and select the lines as they go around. Like that. And then we can go to edit and then join. And they will join together. Now, in, in the ideal world, we're going to look at what our command line says. And you see, after I've done the command, it says 10 curves joined into one closed curve. Right? That's a good sign. That means I have one completely looped, closed curve. That's what I, in an ideal world, that's what I want. Um, if you're not getting that result, chances are you have overlapping curves. And you may, when you go to do the extrude, end up with some problems or with some surfaces that overlap. So you want to be aware of that. So I'm going to move into doing an extrude command. And so I can get that uh, by going to surface, right? extrude curve straight. Or I can just type extrude CRV, extrude curve. Okay, so it says select curves to extrude. I'm going to pick. I'm going to do them one at a time. You could do them both at the same time. I'm going to pick this curve, and I'll press enter when I'm done. Okay, and we kind of see it in 3D that it's it's allowing me to pull that curve up. Okay, it's just in wireframe because I don't have it set uh, not to be in wireframe just yet. But I want to look at my options. So I have direction. I have both sides, so just like an offset, I could extrude both directions. Right? I have something called solid, and right now it says no. And so when it's, what it's referring to is that it won't have a top or a bottom on it. It'll just be surfaces on the walls. I want it to be solid objects. So I'm going to click on where it said solid no, and it's now going to say solid yes. And we'll see a little bit thicker lines at the top, and we'll also see this little cross along the top surface that kind of indicates that it's, it's it's a three-dimensional surface. OK, so I've gone ahead and done that. There are other options here. Delete input means get rid of the original curve and just leave me with the object. Because it's on its own layer, there's no reason to delete that. So we'll just leave it in place. Um, and so the rest of it is just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and type in extrusion distance. So it's asking me what distance I want for the extrusion. And so I know that I want this to be 10 feet, because that's what I specified earlier when I draw the drew the elevation. So I'll do 10 with a little apostrophe, and I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And so now we see that, OK, we're starting to have a three-dimensional object here. We are still in what's called a wireframe view, so we're not seeing any, any solid surface yet. Uh, I want to change that, so I'm going to go to where it says Perspective, click on this little triangle, and I'm going to change from wireframe to shaded. Okay, there are obviously a bunch of other options here. We just need shaded at this point, in which case we're going to see what our object looks like as kind of a three-dimensional object. Okay? I'm going to repeat the same thing for this curve. So I'll go up to um, surface, extrude, curve, straight. I'll pick this surface, and I'll go ahead and hit Enter. I want to make sure that it says solid yes. And I can type 10 feet, or I can just snap to uh, an adjacent side. And so you see rather quickly that I have a shape that's been established. Okay, Not bad. But when we drew the elevation, right, there were some windows that were cut through. Okay? And I'd really like a way of getting those windows to show up in these walls. So we're going to use another command. And this one takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's one of the most valuable, powerful tools in Rhino. Um, so I teach it to you very, very early on. Uh, but you'll have to get used to it a little bit. And that command is called project. And so what it's going to do, I'm going to turn my curve back on. And we're going to look at this kind of in 3D for a second. It's going to take these lines, and it's going to project them straight onto these surfaces. Okay, So it's kind of like if you were shining a projector through something, and you can see the shadow like end up on the wall in the back. The same concept happens here, where we're going to take a set of lines and throw them out onto a surface behind it. Okay, So the, the key kind of tricky part of this is that you have to do it in a view where the projection. So if I were to project right now in this view, these projections going straight, we might get a little bit of a line intersecting right here on that surface, but we're not really getting a lot of intersection. Okay? We want it to be straight. So I'm going to switch my view, I'll double click on perspective, into probably the front view, where we're seeing 
our object, and our windows all in alignment. Okay? If I were to project in this view, the windows are going to project straight onto the surface there. So I'm going to leave all four views up so you can kind of see it happen okay, while I do it. So I'm going to go up to, um, I always forget where it is. I always type project. Curve. Curve from objects, project. Okay. Select curves and points to project. So I want to project my windows. So I'm going to select this window, and I'll select this window. Right? I only really need to project the windows. I already know where the corners of the building are. Okay? So select curves and objects to project. Press Enter when done. So I'll go ahead and press Enter. Select surfaces or poly surfaces and meshes to project onto. So what do I want to project onto? Well, the good news is I know that the thing that I want to project onto is purple. So I just have to look for a purple line. So I'll go ahead and select this. And we see over here that it's, it's, it's happening. Notice I have to do all of this selection in the front view. I have to be in the front view for this to work. And I'll select this side as well. Right? And now when I go ahead and press Enter to do the projection, if we watch up here, we're going to see these windows basically fly to my building. So I'll go ahead and press Enter. Right? And the windows now flew from where they were here straight across into all the surfaces that they intersected with. Okay? So I ended up getting a window here, but I also got it on the back side because the projection went through each of the surfaces. So if I turn off my front elevation here for a second, and we make perspective take up the, few, few, the full viewport, we can see really easily right, that we have a series of lines right, that go through there. And then I have a matching set of lines on the back side right there. Make sense? Okay. So now that I have those, right, I can do a variety of things to make the window cutouts. Okay. The, um, I don't know really what ends up being the simplest strategy for people. There's a couple different ways of doing it. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways of doing it. Okay. The first way that I'll show you is to use these as trim, which is a command that we are, have already done. Right. And so if I type trim, or if I select trim over here, select cutting objects, I can select this, which is the interior of the window as a cutting object. Sorry, my mouse is really touchy. Let me see if I can switch mice. All right, let's see if we can do this again. So select cutting objects, I would select this. I can flip to the inside here. And I can select that. Right? And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And then I can click on the purple on the inside here. And I can click on the purple on the inside here. And I end up with a hole that goes right through. Okay? Once that's done, I'll press Enter. And then I could use the loft command, which we've used already. And I can go to Surface, Loft, Select Curves to Loft. It would be this curve and this curve. I'll go ahead and press Enter. Enter again. Default options are fine. Enter one more time. And now I'll end up with a little surface that's on the inside of that window. Right? I still have a bunch of other curves, but I basically have punched right through that window, or right through that surface to create the window. Okay? So that's one way of doing it. Okay? There's another way of doing it, and that is to use some surface modeling tools here. Um, and what I'll do is I'll click over here where it says Boolean Union. Right? And if we come down a little bit further, we can get to Make Hole. Okay? It's like a, a wall looking thing with a um, closed polyline. When I collect, click on that, it says Select Planar Closed Curves. Okay? So what does it mean by a planar closed curve? It means that it has to fit flat on a plane. So you can't have a curve that kinks out. It won't work. It has to be flat on a plane. And it has to be closed, which means it has to be a loop. So it can't be open-ended for this to work. So I'll select this as my planar closed curve. I'll go ahead and hit Enter. Select a surface or poly surface. I'll select my wall. Right? And then it's going to let me push kind of through this object. And it's a little hard to see in this view, but I'd like to snap to the back side. Maybe I'll snap right there. Right? So I'm picking the back side of the wall. And I'll go ahead and click, and it will cut through 
that wall, but at the same time it will also give me the surfaces. So it's much faster, but it's a couple different steps than you've learned so far. So again, here's a good example of Rhino where there's multiple ways of doing the same thing, and you have to figure out what the right workflow is for you. Right? Frequently, I'll end up just doing the trims because I think it's easier. Right? But it's just a different strategy. So once again, I'll do that where we'll pick under the Boolean. Down here, we're going to go to Make Hole. Select the planar closed curve. It would be that one. I'll go ahead and hit Enter. Select a poly surface. That would be the poly surface. And we need it to go to the back side of the wall here, right there. And it'll cut through. And I went too far? Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Okay. So let's try it. Make hole. There's that. Actually, you know what? Let's do. Um, I want it, since I already have a window over here, I'd like to try it over here. So let me look down on this for just a second. Let me take that. Oh, come on. There. Let me mirror it. <coughs> so I, have, I just have it over here so that I could try it out. So let's click on this, go to Make Hole, select the planar closed curve, which is right there. I'll hit Enter, select the surface. Right? I selected the whole surface. It's all one continuous surface. And we'll go all the way to the back side of this wall. It'll cut through both. Okay, So fairly convenient way of doing it. Takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's probably the fastest way of doing it. Okay, So I'd like you for you guys to try that out a little bit. We have some other options. Um, notice here that I put that trim around. You know what? Let me change out of being purple into being uh, like light gray. Because I think you'll be able to see. Yeah, that's much easier for you guys to see. So we'll work in light gray for right now. So I drew this, or I, I projected this outer curve to be the, the trim around the window. Okay? And so I could, you know, using my little rectangle tool, I could actually build up some trim that went around the window. Or I could split out that piece of surface from the wall and extrude that to make the, the the trim. So let's let's show you that part. So I'll use a command called split. So let me go to I think it's under edit split. Select objects to split. I'll select this as my surface. I'll hit enter. Select cutting objects. I'll select this. Basically split is trim without deleting the part. Okay? So I'll go ahead and hit enter and it now gives me a separate surface from so there's a surface that's the outside there. See if I can turn it. And there's a separate surface that's the inside there. Now I can go to extrude. So I'll go to surface, extrude. Uh, it's actually extrude surface. So it would be under solid extrude surface. Straight. There it is. And I could say this is one and a half inches of trim. Oh, I did it the wrong direction. It's negative one and a half inches. Hold on a second. Negative 1.5 inches. And now that sticks out as my little bit of window trim. Just showing you that there's more ways of doing it. So what I'm asking for you to do today is to draw the start of your elevation. right? Use Rotate 3D to get it into the 3D view. Extrude and pull up your walls. Project what you've drawn onto the walls. And then cut out the windows. Okay? So it's not too much to do. Right? But it'll test, and it'll start getting you into the third dimension, and you'll start thinking about how to work with it. Okay? Um, we'll make sure you save this, because we'll play around with it again next class. I told you we'd be doing V-Ray, but it'll be fun to throw a little bit of V-Ray onto um, this building that you've been working on. Right? So make sure you actually save it. When you're done today, right, get a nice view, something like that. Go to the little triangle, and go to Capture, to File. And then save it. This would be exercise 203. And I'll click Save. It gives me a nice kind of 3D view of what I've created. You could alternatively go to File and then Print. Change your printer to be um, a PNG or an image file. 
and you could get this view. I don't care which one you do. They're both equally valid, uh, and you're going to post that to class. Are there any questions about what I went over today? Not yet? You will probably run into some questions, particularly with the project command when you go to do it. That's why I'm here. Have me come over. We'll walk through it. Okay? It takes a while to get used to the project command, but it is also one of the coolest commands that you will ever learn in Rhino. Um, when we get to doing topography and you have an undulating surface and you need something to line up with that undulating surface, project can take you know, a, a basic plan, project it down onto the surface, and you can trim out a piece of topography. It's, it's really good. So anyway, we'll get to that. Okay.